Life. Hey guys, so I'm going to put the dragon to bed here. This debate. Take a look. This is the master plate. This is what we probably took a picture of. Notice that it's in the positive image. If you were to roll this, you would get a negative image, which looks like this. But what we're selling you is the ability to make that. So you need, it's a positive and negative. I can't, I could do either one. Actually, I think I have both. But this is, the, you want this direction showing up. These little marks here, you can see them here. That's not going to affect anything. But anyway, let me show you how to do it. So I kind of equate this to, you know how there's Chicago style deep dish pizza and there's New York thin crust style pizza? We make thin crust style pizza here. <laughs> we don't make deep dish. Some people like their deep dish. Some people like thin crust. I, I don't like Chicago style. It's like eating a loaf of pizza. So anyway, back to the point. We make our dyes so that they're, they're designed to be used. Like everybody's dyes are different. Some people want to use foam, and they tell you you need to have manila folders and paper all over them and whatever. We don't do that. But my directions are different than theirs. They're not doing anything wrong. They're just doing it differently. Every die that I create is designed... I like to use 16-gauge metal because by the time I roll this through, it's going to be probably 20-gauge by the time it gets through this rolling mill off of this. So if I just heard someone say they need to, they like to use 26 gauge. Well, you that's impossible for our dies. If you if you want to use 26 gauge, do not buy my dies at all. Please, don't buy them. They're not going to work for you. They're designed to be used. It'll leave a flat back. The reason we do it this way is because that is how dies have always been made. Notice these. Low relief. All this stuff. Every single die here is very shallow. Because we're not trying to get a form. We're just trying to put an engraved pattern into your metal. Everything here is low relief. Now, it's not to say you can't have a high relief pattern. Check these out. These are ridiculous. So look at this. It's like, that's a quarter inch deep. It's totally possible to have both. I just happened to make New York thin crust over here. This is Chicago deep dish. Actually, that's that's like a Parisian quiche or something. That thing's <laughs> fluffy. I make them this way. And this is what we sell. The reason our dyes cost less is not because they're crappy it's because i figured out a way to produce them very cost effectively and i've passed the savings on to you i could charge more i suppose but we don't need to okay so here we go we're gonna roll your rolling mill up i i i feel the manufacturers of rolling mills pain i swear they're probably just cringing at the thought of pattern plates being used in their machines because they really were never designed for that. So when you set this up, you're going to need to bring your handle all the way down and you make sure that you take up all the slack. Okay. This is where people mess up. They crank it down, but they don't take all the slack out. They just get them to touch. You actually want to get it pretty tight. So make a mental note of where your handle is here. The way I like to do it is I hold on to this handle and I spin it around all the way back and I can take it out. And I bring it all the way back around, back. So now we're at the location where this was fully closed. I'm going to put half a turn on this, okay? Just half a turn. So we're, this is going to end up over here, right there. Now we're going to roll it and let's see what we get. I'm just testing, it might not be enough, okay?
Make sure your plates are lined up. And there is your dragons. Okay? And here's your plate. Let's take a, uh, a measurement and see how much my metal reduced in thickness. I designed the, I think most people are building or buying these to make cuffs. That's what most people seem to want these for, okay? So you don't make a cuff out of 26 gauge, you don't make it out of 24 gauge. You make it out of 16. And another thing, if you're going to roll silver, roll copper first. Do not just go full send with $200 worth of silver and call me and say it didn't work. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> That's insane. Practice. Oh, cool. Here's our, our gauge. So this started out, it was actually a little heavier. Let's see. Here's a plate. Let's see where we're at. So, this is actually pretty heavy material. I started out, okay, 14 gauge metal is where I was at. Let's see where we're at now. I'm at 16. I went down two gauges. So, if you start at 18, you're going to end up at 20. If you start at 16, you're going to end up at 18. And 18 is still decent for a cuff. Now, if this here really bothered you, the reason you're seeing this is because I got full depth on my plate. When I rolled these two together, there's no way it could have gone any deeper. There is no way I could have gotten any more out of this design. Okay, but got a good looking dragon here. And I don't know if you patina can you, it. Can you buff it out or anything? That little mark? Yeah. yeah. So there's a couple ways of doing it. If you're going to polish, do heavy polishing, I would use Tripoli. Gone. A couple little marks. Now, that being said, you can also do this. The, uh, I just happen to have a wheel, but if you want to mess with your plate, feel free. You're not hurting anything. These are not, these are consumable. This isn't a lifetime piece. They can be replaced very easily. They're not going to last forever. You could probably get, uh, I don't know, maybe 50, 100 rolls out of it before it's shot. So what this is, this is just a big uh, Scotch Bright wheel. It's gone. It's basically just a rubber wheel, is all it is. So let's go roll another piece. Oh, 
But again, I can show these videos over and over, but if you do not like thin crust pizza, you will not like my plates. Let's try one here. This is, let's see what gauge this is. I think this is 22. Let's see what happens. Where'd you put it? I don't know. <laughs> you just had it. I just had it. it got so oh, it's over here. Again, you know, let's see what this is. 16, 17, 18, 19. It's 20 gauge. This is a piece of 20 gauge. Let's try it. Let's look at the thing first. Sure. Cool. Buffed it up a little bit. Now, to, I'm going to try to explain it as best I can. When you press, when you roll something, the, the piece we rolled, the copper piece over here, hopefully this makes sense to people. When you roll something or reduce something in thickness, if you reduce it 20%, much easier than reducing it 50%. So this is going to take more work to get a good impression than the 16 gauge will. It's going to take a lot more work. I'm going to have to push harder because I have less metal to work with. It's going to be squeezing it more than 50%. Okay? So let's let's give it a try. Once again, you will Bring it up and watch. You'll see this thing's going to end up in a different position. So look at that. We're all the way around here. So what this used to be over here. So if that gives you any idea of thicknesses and gauges, a lot of people don't understand thicknesses and gauges. But we're over here. I've taken up all the slack. So we're going to bring it all the way back to here. And I'm going to move it all the way to here. And then this is going to come all the way over here. And let's see what the image looks like. Because I've got less metal to work with, so we'll see what it looks like. Still pretty good. Not bad, really. Kind of amazed it looks pretty good. I like it. But I think it's too thin for much use. So let's take a look. We were at 20 gauge, and we probably went down two sizes. Yeah, here's 20, 20, 21. So it's between 21 and 22. So about two sizes in thickness. So I think it's still a pretty good image. I really do. I don't know how much depth the person needs, but I guess it comes down to deep dish pizza, you know? This isn't any significantly deeper, you know, it's just a different look because you're seeing the outside image. You can see that we don't have that mark anymore. I kind of use that mark as a signal, like when we're making our plates, I use the background texture as a signal that I've gone deep enough that we can that's as deep as I can go that we're getting the full image but um, yeah anyway like I said like I've always said though if you are unhappy with anything we make you don't have to keep it just send it back we will refund you fully it's not a problem okay anyway hopefully you guys saw how this worked and, oh, one more thing that people get concerned about, the curve in the metal. That's normal. They're always going to curve. And the reason they're curving is because the top metal is softer. So, like, let's see. Come here. Here's, let me show you some. These, are, these plates were cut about 100 years ago, and they're big. They're made by Gorham. This is how they made platters. So it's not like I pulled this uh, 
crazy idea out of my butt. This is, we're trying to replicate hand engraving. Now take a look at this plate. This is a negative. Notice. So this plate here, notice how you look at it, and it's different than those plates. Those are positives. Those are master plates. This is a copy. This was rolled. And notice the curve in the metal. This plate is curved. And it is because they would roll silver across the top of this. And it would bend this plate. I've got about 50 of these. And this is the least curved one. Some of them look like I could wrap them around a pole. Okay? But there's nothing wrong with the plate. It's just they're going to bend. And even these guys, this is a consumable item. You go back to your master and make a new working copy. Okay? Just like, the, just like everyone who's etching their dies, they have their master pattern, and then they make the copies. Everything you buy is a copy off of the master. That's what we're doing too. That's how the whole world works. Because if I sold you the master, well, then you'd get a negative, and it would look funny. As you can see, they've all got a curve in them. It isn't a defect. It's not because we use cheap steel or anything else. And you also you don't need to use, we'll just get the airing of grievances. <laughs> um, you don't need to use manila envelopes, cardboard, cardstock. The rolls on a rolling mill are 60 plus Rockwell. They're super hard. They're, this has the consistency of Velveeta cheese in the steel world, okay? It's perf, it's harder than the copper, and that is why you get the impression. But it is softer than your rolls. Now this roll, now this plate here, Usually they're marked. This one is, this is probably 60 Rockwell. So I built a special machine to produce our rolls on our plates. If I was to use this in this machine, I could wreck my rolls. It would happen. This is really hard. I think the term harder than, the, basically it's called a hob. And it's called roll hobbing. Basically this is harder than the hobs of hell, where they mint demons. This thing is tough. So... Anyway, that's the story, guys, and hopefully I've explained it well enough, you know, with my deep dish pizza and New York thin crust style, um, so that you can make a choice about what you want to buy and what purpose it's going to work for. Obviously, ours are not for every purpose, and the deep dish style is not for every purpose either. So, <laughs> one more... Let's just drag this out and beat the horse some more. These are all pattern rolls. If you think my detail is fine, look at this. This is a like a it's almost like a screen. It's a full three-dimensional pattern in a roll. This is very low relief. We're talking a couple thousandths of depth. What you're trying to do is put a pattern, not a shape, into the metal. All we wanted was the pattern of a, of a dragon. It's not going to be a full three-dimensional dragon. If you want a full three-dimensional dragon, that's a whole different die. This is a pattern. Okay. Where's the... Where's my... Oh, here it is. Oh. These look better when you patina them. Anyway... Actually, I'm kind of impressed with the uh, 22 gauge. It really came out pretty nice. I like it. So, yeah. You could definitely use 22 gauge, 20 gauge with them. Just got to set the tension right. Damn near did a better job almost. But anyway, there you go, guys. Thanks for watching.